I like eating chocolates a lot. Lately, I had discovered these lovely chocolate muffins at Starbucks. No wonder I ask for Starbucks gift cards at Christmas or birthdays. Yeah! How about you? Enjoy drinking Coke or eating ice cream? Tastes good. Why do such things taste so good? Perhaps that 39 grams of sugar in a 12 ounce can of Coke or 20 to 97 grams of sugar in a serving of ice cream. Of course, depending on how much you order, the makers of such products know what to put in them to keep you happy and returning for more and more. In addition to tasting good, sugar can give us a, a high. So sugar is making food and drinks taste better, plus a little energy boost. In 2016, the World Health Organization, WHO, found 39% of the world's adult population was overweight. Why? A high diet of sugar and fat. Also, WHO found mental health disorders are on the rise. In 2019, it was estimated that 301 million people worldwide were living with an anxiety disorder. This includes 58 million children and adolescents. Is there a connection between sugar and mental health? Let's take a look. Walking to a grocery store or any kind of small convenience store and you see it. Sugar. Sugar is everywhere and it comes in names like glucose, fructose and lactose. It's not just in my chocolate muffins, but in peanut butter, dried fruit, dairy-free milk, and whole grain bagels. Why? I recall this documentary on sugar, and the researcher said, if there was no sugar in food, it would taste bad, or like cardboard. Our brain is set up to be an extensive reward system and sugar is something the brain likes. Our brain has many electrical and chemical pathways that span its various regions and sections. When we eat sugar, these pathways get excited. We start to feel good. Perhaps you intend to eat one cookie, but next thing you know, you've eaten five or more. Sugar should not be seen as something to make food just taste better, but as a substance that can be addictive. A study done on rats found rats were more addicted to sugar water than cocaine. The chemical or neurotransmitter in our body at the heart of this reward system is dopamine. There are many dopamine receptors in our brain. Sugar stimulates or activates these receptors, releasing dopamine into our system. With more dopamine, the more we feel good, the more likely we can become addicted. Let's take something that many people like. Think of coffee. How much can you drink in a day or a week? Now think, I'm gonna stop drinking it. Hard to do, addicted are you? This can explain all the coffee shops we see these days. More on sugar addiction later in the video. When people are depressed or feeling in a dark place, one way they tend to help themselves is to eat more. They eat to feel better. Just think how you feel when you eat something you like. Feels good. For many to feel better, they eat sugar. Researchers investigating depression found that brain-derived neurotropic factor BDNF is lacking in depressed people. This protein is needed to grow and maintain brain functioning especially in emotional and cognitive areas. Low levels of BDNF were shown in autopsies of suicide victims and people with depressive disorders. The research adds sugar can suppress or lower the function of BDNF. So suppose the person has a naturally low level of BDNF and is eating lots of sugar. In that case, it could decrease it increasing existing depression or creating more depressive feelings. Years ago, a study was done in six countries with data on the national sugar intake, and a connection was found between sugar consumption and depression. More sugar, more depression. This study came out in 2002. 
if a link was found then and in today's world, with many countries focused on highly processed food with low nutritional value, that is a problem. It also could explain whose estimate that 300 million people globally suffer from depression. When people are dealing with problems or painful situations, this can result in anxiety and stress for them. How to deal? As mentioned already, people tend to eat more. This is particularly true of high sugary foods, with studies finding 60 to 70% of people consuming more sweets during times of stress. The mind-body promotes this eating to help it deal with anxiety. The sugar is tasty, allowing the person to relax and feel better, but it can increase blood glucose levels. Reflect on your stressful times. Did you eat more? With this extra sugar in the system, we can have this new energy. However, what goes up comes down. After the high comes the low. You can feel weak, have difficulty focusing, have increased heart rate, have trouble sleeping. It's kind of like feelings of withdrawal. These issues in themselves are anxiety and stress producing. Not only that, let's say you're used to eating a certain food, it being cakes, donuts, pie, or whatever. And now through this video or some other information sources, you realize it's time to cut them down or cut them out of your diet. You can be at odds with yourself. You know it isn't good, but you like the sugar. You've eaten cookies for 20 years and now it's time to stop? You might hear in your mind, how can I enjoy life? The back and forth in your mind can cause anxiety in itself. Sugar is a part of our lives. I grew up always having dessert after lunch, after supper. That's a lot of sugar when I think about it, but I have cut down, but it's hard. This is where sugar takes on this addictive life. As I mentioned earlier in this video, sugar allows the brain to release this feel-good chemical dopamine. The more sugar, the more dopamine. We can become controlled by this need for sugar, a need for a dopamine release. You can start to find yourself in places with a lot of sugary products. For example, like the candy section of the grocery store. Something kind of, you could say, takes you there with really no effort. It's like a cycle. You eat the cookie or the chocolate, then the sugar rush hits. After that, the low. The low is hard and painful, so eat more sugar to feel good. The cycle goes on. This can bring you down if it's ongoing. It's like someone addicted to drugs and alcohol. The substance gives you a mood change. Once its effects are declining or gone, anxiety, sadness, and hopelessness result in withdrawal effects. Because of the widespread use of sugar in the foods we eat, helping to reduce it can help reduce its impact on our mental health. Keep a daily journal on how much sugar you consume in a day. Write down the foods and drinks that have sugar in them. Doing so makes you more aware of how much you're taking in. The more aware you are, you may think twice next time you go for that sweet drink. The idea here is to get you off autopilot regarding sweets. Reduce the products you buy that contain sugar. To help, create a shopping list in advance with non-sugary products. Focus on that list only when at the grocery store. Lots of sugar in drinks we buy. Make water your new drink of choice. Boring, you say? Add some lemon or natural fruit to it. I like my pancakes on a Sunday morning, but do I need so much sugar on them? Cut your use of liquid sugar. Get your sugar fix through natural sugar in fruit. The fiber in fruit helps break down the sugar more efficiently. Are you a cook and like sugar in the baking? Use half the amount or less. Use extracts, for example, vanilla or lemon or spices, instead of sugar in your cooking. 
Sugar is in many foods and drinks we like. Thinking we can cut it out of our diets entirely is unrealistic for many people because it makes food more tasty and appealing. However, too much sugar can allow some people to experience mental health challenges. Let's face it, the human body was not designed to handle the sugar portions we have in our foods today. Understanding that the mind and body are connected, eating less sugar can allow us to gain the best health possible. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please pass it on to someone who could benefit from it. As always, wishing you the best mental health wherever you are in this big world and until the next video, take care. In today's video we talked about sugar. I have another video on emotional eating you might want to check out. Enjoy.